Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Tom Spark. I am a VPN reviewer, privacy advocate, and so on. I do reviews on vpntierlist.com. Check out that website if you want to see my top rated VPNs with transparent, um, verifiable rankings and data on a data table on that, especially on that website. If you're kind of interested in protecting your privacy and you don't want to get docs, check out a word from one of my top affiliates. This uh, browser tier list is not affiliated with any browser or sponsored by any browser, so you know it's subjective. But if you like this video, you like data driven kind of analysis like this, check out my affiliate and it will help support the channel and you'll also get some additional privacy benefits. So before we get to the tier list, check that out. Are you guys ever worried about getting doxxed? I know I am. That's why I use a service called Incogni. Now I've reviewed almost all the major data broker removal tools and I found that this one is the best. It's the cheapest and it also has a really good family plan as well. If you use my link in the description down below, you should be able to get 50% off Incogni. I have not been sponsored by Incogni for some time, but they are one of my top affiliates and they're one of my favorite products here on the channel because they prevent it so you don't get doxxed, it removes your information from websites. So if someone does find your IRL name, they won't be able to connect it to your address, phone number, and even your family members. Additionally, this can also give you less robocalls since companies aren't able to find your internet just like on the, um, they're not able to just find it like it's some public message board. So if you guys wanna help support the channel and get one of my favorite products, click the link in the description down below. All right, guys, welcome back. Let's go ahead and make this tier list right now. This is pretty much like every browser out there when it comes to um, privacy, non-privacy, just convenience, usability, stuff like that. We're gonna be primarily ranking it kind of by privacy and also kind of considering some other things like usability. Um, so we're gonna be kind of trying to aggregate both into kind of one tier list. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, this is just kind of my opinion, but also I've tested most every one of these browsers so keep that in mind going forward um, so guys let's get into these rankings. all right guys so let's go ahead and start off this list it's gonna be kind of exhaustive but I'll try to put timestamps in the description down below so guys first up we have uh, this little guy it's called pale moon now I hadn't even heard of this one for a while um, but definitely it kind of was more popular coming out five or six years ago so pale moon is kind of like a fork of Firefox that focuses more on customization and efficiency it actually uses an older engine so it does kind of offer like a unique classic firefox feel i would say that the pros are is that it's lightweight customizable and it does support legacy firefox extensions some of the cons are though that it is kind of outdated when it comes to web standards it doesn't have as many updates some of the updates are slower when it comes to security things and it also has limited extension support compared to modern browsers for now i'm probably going to put it into c tier just because i don't think it's really that competitive nowadays next up we have um arc and brave I'll do Brave first. I would say that Brave is definitely one of the most popular nowadays privacy focused um, browsers. It's really kind of set the standard for kind of default ad blocking, tracker blocking, and so on. It kind of was kind of popularized by having like really good a referral system. I could pretty much tell people to check out Brave and I would get like $10 just like free. So that was pretty cool back in the days. Um, it's still a very, very good browser and very well respected in the privacy community. Um, there have been some controversies Controversies with some of like the decisions the team has made the CEO is a little questionable um, there's been some like redirecting to some things affiliate links sometimes and things like that that have happened that kind of jeopardize its reputation a bit um it really kind of always kind of shoving like crypto ads in your face too on the home page which is kind of annoying um the cryptocurrency i don't know that seems kind of gimmicky to me but that said at the end of the day it's based on chromium it's fast it's got decent built-in privacy kind of stuff going on so i'm just going to kind of rate it a day tier for now Next up, we do have Arc. Now, Arc is a newer browser that I actually viewed on my channel. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of like a kind of like Opera or something like that. It's got some of those kind of gimmicks. One of its kind of primary gimmicks is kind of like having like kind of like a weird border system and tab system. It's kind of trying to reorganize that a little bit. So it is kind of interesting for that. But that said, I didn't really find it that compelling to kind of switch to it every day, and it was kind of clunky day to day in terms of the day to day use. 
Um, I would probably just give it something like a C, just because it's kind of like a new thing that is kind of uh, kind of trying to do different things. So I kind of do appreciate that, but not really that interesting overall to switch to. Next up, we have ungoogled Chromium. So this is kind of interesting. It's kind of like Google Chrome, but you strip the Google part out of it. Now it's probably not going to be as secure as something like Google, um, but the benefit is it's going to be much more privacy friendly. It's fast. It's open source. It does require manual updates, I do believe. But that said, it is a pretty good option. I don't know if it's really that much worth using over Brave, but still pretty solid. This browser is called Discotech. Now, I don't really see anyone ever talking about it. It's not really widely recognized or kind of like a mainstream browser. Um, it is lightweight and efficient for kind of what it does, and it might have some unique features, but I would say it doesn't have that many extensions. It doesn't have that many customization options compared to some of the major browsers, and limited recognition and regular updates could mean less reliability overall, so I don't think it's really worth using. Next up, we have have Microsoft Edge. Now, Microsoft Edge is kind of one of those browsers that is interesting to use. On one hand, it's associated with Microsoft, so you could throw your privacy out the window. Um, on the other hand, it, it can be good to use sometimes, like on a side note. For some reason, I like using Microsoft Edge for specific things. Um, sometimes I'll use it to check search rankings. Um, I kind of use it as my browser that like, I don't use, but I do use for some things. Um, if that makes sense, it doesn't have, I, don't, I clear the cookies out of it all the time so it can also work with some websites for compatibility i'm not sure why um, sometimes google chrome or brave or firefox won't work with a website but microsoft edge does i have no clue why that is um, but it does have its individual use cases is it good for privacy no but it is compatible it is fast so i'm going to give it kind of like a b tier ranking just for those reasons i hope that makes sense next up we have firefox now firefox is very interesting because it's like simultaneously one of the most respected, but also simultaneously kind of like a weirdly ran company. It makes most of its profit actually from people using Google search on it. I think um, Google pays them like a ton of money just to have it as the main search engine on there, which is kind of like a conflict of interest in my opinion. That said, it's default and customizable privacy options are pretty good. Um, it doesn't have the same kind of extension support as something like Google, but it's probably second in terms of that, in terms of Chromium. It's probably second compared to that in terms of extension support. It can be very compatible with various websites, which is good, kind of like Edge. It's also multi-platform, which is nice, very simple to use, very clean and everything like that. But that said, the Mozilla Profit Foundation, I don't know, it seems like it's kind of struggling for development. You find various articles about that. Some of the products they developed really just don't seem very compelling. They don't really clearly seem to know how to make money, and that's kind of concerning, and there have been some kind of issues with updates and things like that. Um, so overall, I don't think I'm really going to rate it above Brave, um, just because I find, you know, kind of clear set of pros and cons with both of those. But it is an excellent, well-rounded browser. Next up, what the hell is this? I'll talk about this one in a second. This one is uh, Clicks, I think it is. It's like a privacy focused web browser based on Firefox. Uh, I don't think it's even developed anymore. I think the last time it was developed was like 2020 if I'm if I'm right. So I'm just gonna put this in the D tier. Next up we have Google Chrome. Now this might be controversial in this video. Is it the best for privacy? No, just like Edge. Throw that out the window. Whoosh. Um, however, that said, for compatibility, for extensions, for security, for usability, day-to-day -day stuff, not privacy related, you know, it's a decent browser. Um, Google Chrome came out and it really took over the industry very, very, very quickly. Um, it kind of threw Firefox into the trash bin. It just took over and there's a reason why. It's fast and it has all those things, like I said, is it privacy focused? No, not really, not at all. You might be able to customize it to some extent. You're never gonna strip Google out of it like you could with something like on Google Chromium, but for what it is, it is a good browser. It's just not good for privacy. That said, if you use something like Firefox or Brave over Google Chrome, you're gonna notice a couple little hiccups along the way. I've noticed that after years and years of using all these different browsers, Google Chrome gives me the least issues. It's not good for privacy. Brave is better for privacy, but every once in a while, I'll have some issues with some of my websites. It's weird. I don't know. It just kind of happens. And you've probably experienced that too. Same with Firefox. Um, but there you go. 
Like I said, this list is a combination of privacy, aggregated ratings of all the things, not just privacy, not just usability. So there you go. What What is this Internet Explorer doing down here? Do, do people even still use this? I thought Edge had replaced it. It might be like on some old computers. Yikes. It does bring back memories though. So guys, this one is Basilisk. It's like a browser fork of Firefox. Honestly, I don't see anyone talking about this. It was actually developed by the same people who made Pale Moon and kind of is more of like a classic Firefox experience. However, very small community, not really um, updated very often, but if you want like a classic Firefox, you know, there you go, go crazy. I'm gonna put it by Pale Moon. Next up, we have IceCat and Globus Browser. This one's kind of interesting because it does have a built-in VPN, um, but I don't really ever see people talking about these either, and there's probably just not gonna be as good compared to the bigger user base kind of options. Now we have something called LibreWolf, and I actually think LibreWolf could be one of the best browsers. Now it's just like Firefox, but kind of less work to customize to privacy. And also it's built in kind of add-ons that are very useful for blocking things. Um, you might need to manually update it, but that's not really a huge issue. Um, it really kind of is it's the standard for like a built-in kind of good experience. It's kind of like if Brave was based it's kind of like how Brave is like Chrome, um, but LibreWolf is kind of like Firefox. However, it's like if you took out the crypto component, so there you go. That's kind of interesting to think about. I do think it's one of the best browsers. Let me know in the comments down below if you believe that LibreWolf is one of the best browsers out there. So definitely pretty cool. It's also pretty well uh, recognized and used too. Next up, we have something called Movad Browser. Now I see a lot of privacy shields out there. They really like this one. And I can't really blame them in certain ways. That said, it's pretty much just like if you took LibreWolf, you disabled it and the ability to have cookies, you slap Movad Browser's name onto it because it is using pretty much Firefox. And then you kind of packaged in Movad's branding and kind of like a little proxy that will kind of scramble your traffic. Um, it's not really that much more useful day to day compared to something like LibreWolf, um, besides the fact you can't have cookies and you're going to be logging into websites all the time. So yeah, I, I just don't really find it that compelling for those reasons. I'm just going to put it into B tier. Next up, we have Opera. Now, Opera is one of those browsers that kind of came out when after kind of Google Chrome and it kind of had like, it was kind of cool. It had a lot of cool like little customization. You could, I liked using it way back in the day, like before 2010, I think. It kind of had like cool little shortcuts you could do with your mouse. Like you could draw a circle to refresh and go back and forth. It was kind of like had all those cool little gimmicks. And, but eventually it kind of got sold, I think. And and the, it had a VPN component, so I think it's kind of associated with China too. Um, so not really compelling. Uh, it had a really big advertising. Um, it's got some interesting features, but yeah, honestly, I'm just gonna put it in the C tier. I just don't really think it's that compelling or good for privacy, and doesn't really offer anything besides kind of gimmicks. Um, kind of like Arc Browser, really, to be honest. You know, you might even put them like that. So there you go. Now Safari. Safari is used on Apple devices. It's not available on anything else, which is annoying. On those devices, it does present a decent experience. That said, I haven't found it as good as something like Brave to do ad blocking and so forth. Um, it's it's more privacy oriented than something like probably like Edge or Google Chrome. Um, I don't know if it's quite as usable as those ones. You will run into a little bit more issues with various things. Um, but at the end of the day, for those devices, it's an okay option as it is next up we have something like samsung browser now this one is interesting on samsung devices because it's really good built-in dark mode bad blocking doesn't really do anything more than safari it's not as competitive or as compelling as something like brave when it comes to ad blocking but the dark mode is very good so if you like dark mode there you go the ui is also not bad either on those devices why is on Google Chromium here? We already did this. Let's get rid of that. What the hell is this? Next up, we have something like um, um, Tor Browser. Now this one is gonna be very similar to Molvad Browser. Honestly, Molvad worked with Tor to make Molvad Browser. But Tor isn't really that similar to Molvad Browser. 
Tor is like a new browser that doesn't save anything. It's like completely anonymous. It's routed through the Tor network and so forth. A lot of websites will make it so you can't log in. They don't like when you use it. Day-to-day -day use is not that good. That said, for privacy, it's pretty good. But lately I've seen reports that some of the Tor network could be infiltrated by spy agencies. So I don't know. It's just not that compelling to me. I haven't ever used the day-to-day. -day. It's slow as well. So the privacy community likes to shill it all the time. Say, hey, don't use VPNs. Use this browser when a VPN and a browser are vastly different things. And there you go. So that's just my opinion. This one I looked up, it's called Sea Monkey. I've honestly never heard anyone uh, talk about this at all. And uh, same with these ones. Let's just let's just put these down here. Let me know if you guys have any opinions about these as well. Because if I haven't heard of them, chances are you haven't either. And chances are they're not really doing anything interesting. All right, guys, this is my final rankings for this tier list. It's a combination of privacy, kind of aggregating everything into a tier list, valuing usability, privacy, and just uh, multi-platform ability as well. I think Librevol prevents probably the most built in default privacy settings for a very usable browser. Um, something like Chrome is not very privacy friendly, but it's extremely usable very fast and kind of the de facto option that started off the Chromium phase. Something like Brave is also very good if you want to use something like Chrome, but you want a lot more privacy and stuff like that. It does kind of, it's not as compatible in some ways. It does have a lot of annoying gimmicks like crypto and stuff like that. Firefox is also very good. It's kind of like LibreWolf. It's maybe a little bit more easier to use, but the, you have to customize it a little bit more to get some of that default um, kind of privacy. Now, if you want to check out some of the other ones on Google, Chromium is probably good as well. I might kind of switch that to there. I do think it's better than something like Mulvad Browser, um, but these are probably going to be my final rankings here. Um, so guys, let me know what you think down in the description down below um, of this ranking system. Now, remember, I'm not just rating this for privacy because that's not the only only component you should consider when using a web browser so let me know what you think in the description down below thanks for checking out my affiliate if you like this video stick around for more tier lists on the channel very soon